you. So, as mentioned, uh, my name is Mikhail Swift. I'm going to talk a little bit about supply chain security, which <laughs> changed the pace for the past few talks. Uh, it's me. I'm co founder and CTO of Testify Sec. I've contributed a little bit to the CNCF software supply chain best practice paper in Toto. And I really love uh, open source software. So, a lot of what I'm seeing today is you know, really, really cool and speaks to me. So, I guess talking about software supply chain security is a really complex, many problem, many faceted issue, right? We have a lot of problems to solve all at once and a very little amount of time to do it. And kind of a high level overview of some of the problems that we see obviously are how do I know what happened with this build? Where was it built? Uh, you know, who triggered a build, Where who committed to it? And how do I prove that when I'm using it or when I wanna use this piece of software? Next problem, big problem that we have is how do I know if I can trust who's giving me this information? So the signature on it, where did it come from? Who is it and, and how do I know that signature was actually from them? And the problem that I'm kind of gonna really focus on for this talk is how do I discover this information? How do I actually get it to use it when I'm wanting to evaluate policies? So as far as like actually generating this data and attestations go, we have a bunch of really awesome work happening in the open source. We have Tekton Chains, uh, the middle one's a new logo, it's Witness, it's the project that I primarily work on. We have Salsa provenances, and uh, Salsa gives a, you know, a bunch of awesome frameworks on how to make decisions and, and really assess the risk assessment of an artifact given the information that you have. But the one thing that all three of these, and I'm sure many more projects that I did not include here have in common, is they speak the Intoto language. They use Intoto statements, they create uh, Intoto subjects, and, and kind of wrap them up in Intoto attestations. For the trust problem, we've seen you know, Sigstore come out with uh, keyless signing, really the recore transparency log to give kind of a non-repudiation about the, the stuff being signed. Spiffy Spire for workload identities, establishing trust there. But what I feel we kind of have a gap in right now is the actual discovery and usage of this information. We have policy engines, we have all this to actually make the decisions, but we're somewhat lacking a way really to find it and, and kind of query and use it. So ponder a situation where we have a large CI pipeline. We have some things that are happening, like a manual process, people approving things in service now, tests happening, uh, linting, testing, and then finally a build and then a deploy to you know, a, some environment. A lot of these things might happen prior to an artifact's creation. And trying to link that back to the things that have happened before isn't always the easiest thing to do. So that's kind of one of the problems I keep encountering when we're working on witness and policy enforcement is how do I find the code review attestation to prove that you know, Alice approved me to put this in production. So if we can find the attestation from when the product was created, maybe we can use context clues from those attestations to find the other more relevant ones. And when we start looking at this, it kind of starts resembling a graph. I have the attestation for when the product was built. That gives me the commit it was built from. I can use that to then look up attestations that were irrelevant to that commit linting, testing, scanning, and I can start bringing those into my policy decisions. And uh, sorry for the, the kind of rough graphic, but this is kind of what it might so look something like. We have a program. We use that digest of that program to look up a compile attestation that shows us this is how it was built, this is where it was built, and this is who signed that attestation saying that I built this on this infrastructure maybe that attestation might contain things like the commit ID to get us back to that code attestation one, a GitLab project ID if it were built on GitLab to get us to maybe some deployment info that didn't show up for us at first, or maybe who made the commit so we can start getting back to the provenance of the developer themselves. So as we looked at this and, and, and kept seeing this kind of graph form up around us, we decided to go ahead and try to create a graph database and graph service to find and discover and query these this Intoto attestations. 
So what Archivist does is it takes in total statements and indexes them onto a graph uh, using, and which is a Go framework for graph databases. It exposes a GraphQL API, so users of this can query it, find things, and, and kind of refine their queries over time to find more and more relevant attestations. It pulls out specific things like what attestations were in that Intoto attestation, with the signatures on it, so we can look at the signatures before pulling the attestation, um, and what other subjects existed on that Intoto attestation. So we can then use those to kind of expand our graph search. So it uses Intoto subjects as graph edges. If you're familiar with Intoto attestations, what, they all have a statement, some subjects that describe what the statement is describing, and then the statement itself, which is at this point kind of a arbitrary amount of data. It could be a salsa provenance. It could be anyone else who takes some of these Intoto attestations and implements them. So I have uh, a few demos I'll show real quick to kind of demonstrate how we can use this. All right. So I have a simple main program. All it does is print hello security con to the console. And I have some commits about it. All right, I have these commits here. And what I do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an, a witness policy, which is describing what I expect should have happened when I get this binary. I expect a step named build to happen that should have some materials, which is describe all the files that were used during the build process. It should have run a command, and it has an embedded Rego policy here that will let us enforce things about that command. I'll show that here in just a second. And it should also have some attestations about a product, which will be the binary that was created during that build. And the functionaries describe what identity we use to trust the attestation when we're evaluating the policy. In this case, we're just for this demo. I'm using public keys, nothing you know fancy. Um, and then the next step we expect should be a packaging step, where we're going to we're going to package it and create a tarball of that binary, and then maybe upload it to some repo to use later. And similarly, I have an expected command that I'm going to enforce when I'm evaluating this policy. And again, the, the functionaries, and then just the global functionaries for the policy itself. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna assign that policy we just looked at with this command. So this is just telling witness to use a, a YAML config I have and, and sign the policy document we just looked at. It's going to do that. And then I'm going to wrap my go build with witness as well. And it's going to create this and it's going to store the attestation in Archivist with some Gitoid that we can use to find later. The getoid is just a, a basically a, a SHA of that file, the, a unique identifier of it. And the next thing I'm gonna do is copy my packaging step here. So that's gonna create that tarball, and again, going to create an attestation that we store in Archivist. So now if I wanna, uh, validate this policy. Oh, I messed my, uh, my policy. Wrong file, sorry. Oops. Oh, so what happens when you change your demo last second and mess up your scripts. My apologies. Okay, 
So now we use that policy that we created in that first step to evaluate this, just this binary that we have. And what Witness did in this case was go to Archivist with the hash of that file, that binary, and, and kind of interrogate it to figure out what evidence do we have about this build process. So it found the two different attestation envelopes we, we had generated prior and said, this is what I use as evidence to say this artifact is all good to run. And uh, so kind of to show what this looks like maybe a little bit is we have just a playground right now uh, to kind of query into and show what the data in Archivist looks like. So we have this hash, which is a hash of a different product that I had created earlier. I'm gonna to try to find attestations about it. And, and what we find here is we have one attestation, this Gitoid, we say it built, it has a few different things in it. And the subjects include a git commit. So we found one piece of evidence about this attestation, but we can use this git commit to kind of dig in a little bit deeper. And if we look that up, we can see we find six more envelopes with per perhaps relevant data that we can use to continue to make decisions about this, or this artifact. And one last thing I can do to kind of show is, so we have this Spire server binary that we had built previously, and I'm going to record its SHA-256 hash. And I'm going to use Archivist Control to output just a, a rough visualization of the graph of evidence that it can find about this artifact. So all I'm doing here is querying Archivist. It's going to output a dot file for gra from GraphViz, which I can use to turn that into a PNG. And it kind of shows the relationships between these attestations and what we're looking at. We have you know, some information about three different builds that happened on this commit maybe. We have the commit attestation itself. So whoever committed that would have recorded some attestations about themselves. We have dependencies, which records the, well obviously the dependencies of the project and kind of will allow us to make or, uh, policy decisions about that later. So kind of where we want archivists to go and what we really envision for it is we want to archive more data. Right now we're really focusing on an Atoto attestation, but something we see frequently is if I have an SBOM or if I know of a, a CVE, how do I find things that are relevant to that CVE? If archivists can archive, uh, index these SBOMs, it should make finding those things later trivial. This is a GraphQL query we can run on the database and we can find everything we know about that's affected. And obviously improving the user experience. Right now it's obviously early in development where we just have playgrounds and demos, but it's gonna be important to kind of get this right for us going forward. And I kind of ran a little fast, uh, but I had, if there's any questions, otherwise uh, get, Archivist is available on our GitHub publicly and anyone's free to pull it down, play with it, Break it and tell us about it. Yes. Yeah, so Link, right now, we're not currently recording it. I mean, we, we archivists can adjust them, but it's not going to get kind of the more rich data around it yet. Uh, and Toto is moving toward their kind of generic uh, attestation format with ITE, what is it, five or six, I think. So that's where we chose to focus on for right now. Uh, but the link stuff will definitely still be relevant and we'll, we'll definitely be looking at bringing that into Archivist. Well, I think that's it then. All right, well, thank you.